Good morning, St. Margaret's. Thank you for joining us today for our service. It's our first indoor streamed service. Uh, we we vastly enjoyed the outdoor services and getting to fellowship with everyone. And so I know this is going to be a, another change we have to go through, but we do look forward to seeing everybody again. And it, it, it'll happen soon, but we will persevere. And uh, I'm happy that we can present worship to you uh, uh, through this, this medium. So start our, let's start our morning off with hymn number 494, Crown Him with Many th Crowns. Crown Him with many crowns, the Lamb upon the throne. Hark how the heavenly anthems drown all music but its own. Awake my soul and sing of him who died for thee, and tell him as thy matchless king through all eternity. Crown him the Son of God before the worlds began. And ye who tread where he hath trod, crown him the Son of Man. Who every grief hath known that wrings the human breast and takes and bears them for his own. That all in him may rest. Crown him the Lord of life, who triumphed o'er the grave, and rose victorious in the strife for those he came to save. His glories now we sing, who died and rose on high, who died eternal life to bring, and lives that death may die. Crown him the Lord of Lords, who over all doth reign, who once on earth the incarnate word for ransom sinners sing, now lives in light realms of light, where saints with angels sing their songs before him day and night, their God Redeemer King. Crown him the Lord of heaven, enthroned in worlds above. Crown him the King to whom is given the wondrous name of God. Crown him with many crowns as thrones before him fall. Crown him, ye kings, with many crowns for he is king of all. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amazing grace, my chains are gone. Oh. 
Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. My chains are gone been set free my God my Savior has ransomed me and like a flood his mercy reigns unending love amazing grace the Lord promised good to me his word my hope secures he will my shield and promise me as long as life endures my chains are gone I've been set free God, my Savior, is ransom me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. My chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior, his ransom me and like a flood his mercy reigns unending love amazing grace the earth shall soon dissolve like snow the sun there to shine but God who called me here below will be forever mine will be forever mine you are forever Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries. And I will bring them into their own land and I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the water courses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land 
and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide, I will save my flock and they shall no longer be ravaged. And I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 100. You can find that on page 729 of the Book of Common Prayer, as well as your bulletin. We will pray the psalm together in unison. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. The Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. A reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all and all. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, and he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. And the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, truly, I tell you, just as you did it to the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. And he will say to those at his left hand, you that are accursed. Depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. 
For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? And he will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. May speak to you in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, St. Margaret's, it uh, feels a little different uh, to be back in the pulpit. It's, I'm, I'm, I'm overwhelmed with mixed emotions. On the one hand, it, it, it does feel uh, good and right to be in this space. Um, and yet, uh, I, I loved the rhythm that we developed uh, with uh, the outdoor service. It was such a joy to see the cars there uh, Sunday after Sunday. Um, I thought I'd start off this morning talking about uh, our culture and uh, kind of an observation um, that I've been making lately. Uh, So if you were to to stop and you were to take a quick look around our culture, something that might jump out at you is that our culture is obsessed with heroes. Uh, Whether we're talking about the, the the superheroes that dominate so much of film and television, the many heroes uh, that we have in sports, our military and and the political world, or the ordinary and unexpected heroes we so often learn about just in our day-to-day lives. It's evident that in this moment, our popular culture is drawn to the power of a single individual to accomplish something remarkable. I think this is a good thing. I mean, As a culture, as a nation, as a world, we are hurting. And heroes give us hope. And hope is a very, very good thing. I want to talk, though, about sort of uh, a drawback to this uh, moment in our popular culture. Um, One consequence of this turn towards heroes is that our culture has started encouraging us to think of ourselves as heroes. For example... Uh, heroism and the idea of being a hero, it's actually become a pretty significant part of our nation's self-help industry. Uh, TED speakers, uh, gurus, motivational experts, uh, many of them have started talking a great deal about the importance of being the hero of one's own story. The idea here is that every human life has a hero living within it, and therefore the difference between a great life And a not-so-great life often lies in the ability to awaken and call forth the hero within. What I want you to hear from me is that, again, while our culture's attraction and inclination towards heroism makes a great deal of sense, this idea that we're supposed to be the heroes of our own stories is perhaps not the healthiest one we should embrace. You see, at their best, heroes point us to a reality bigger than ourselves. More than that, the power of a really good hero is that he or she reminds us that it's okay to sometimes fall short. It's okay to be the sidekick. It's okay to let the world revolve around something than ourselves, even for just a moment. These things are all okay because of the hope that maybe there are forces in the world that are standing ready to help. The hope that maybe there really are forces in our world that are eager to be guides along the way, if, or better yet, when we stumble. In the end, if everyone is a hero, then perhaps no one is a hero. And a world without heroes strikes me as 
rather gray and uninspiring. Why am I talking about heroes and the need to look to something bigger than yourself? Well, this Sunday is the last Sunday after Pentecost. It's also known uh, as the Feast of Christ the King. It's the final Sunday of our liturgical year. Next week begins Advent. And in this moment, though, we're thinking about this idea that at the center of our world, it's not a fact. It's not a theory. It's not an institution. At the center of our world lives a person, Jesus of Nazareth, the risen one who sits now even at the right hand of God the Father. The story of God's redemption is a story about a person, Jesus, who is able to do that which, in the end, Israel could not. Jesus is the hero of our story, of every story, and he's the foundation of all that was, all that is, and all that will ever be. Every year at Christ the King, I'm reminded of this delightful quote uh, by the philosopher and mystic Simone Weil. She wrote these words. To empty ourselves of the false divinity, to deny ourselves, to give up being the center of of the world in imagination, to discern that all points in the world are, are equally centers and that the true center is outside the world. This is love. As Ve so helpfully explains to us, it's love that pushes us outside of ourselves. It's love that pushes us to put others ahead of ourselves, that pushes us to build our lives on the only thing that will ever truly last in this world, the rock that is Christ Jesus. Love is supposed to always lead us back to God. And it's love that compels us to worship. Love compels us to cast our crowns before the lamb upon the throne. It's love that pushes us to hail him as our matchless king. This act of emptying ourselves that Simone Weil describes for us, it's, it's also important if we want to do a good job of reading Scripture. For example, uh, our gospel reading this week, it's one of my favorites in the New Testament, and it's also one that I'm convinced is perhaps the most misinterpreted text someone might find in the whole of the Bible. There's often a temptation there's a temptation to read this morning's text taken from the 25th chapter of Matthew's gospel and to make the mistake of thinking that this text is primarily about us. It's about me and it's about you. Many people hear these words from Jesus, the end of the age. They, they hear how he explains that the judgment of the nations is in some mysterious sense connected with how people treat the hungry and the poor and the sick and the imprisoned. And, 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 and they stop and they think, all right, this is my to-do list. This is what I need to do in order to earn or merit God's favor. This text is about me. Now it's time to get started. While I understand the temptation to read the text in this way, what I want you to hear from me this morning is that you walk away from this passage thinking that the primary lesson that we can learn here is, is, is something about you or me, something about what we need to do in order to earn God's divine approval, then perhaps, just perhaps, you've missed the heart of the text. You see, first and foremost, this passage is about Jesus. This passage is about Jesus returning to our world in glory, sitting on a throne before all the nations and welcoming the righteous into that final banquet that he has been preparing graciously. This is an image of Jesus, though. At first, he came in great humility, being born in a manger. Will someday return in a glory that far surpasses all human understanding or imagination. This is a passage of great hope. This 
text is an anchor for the soul. It's something you can cling on to whenever you feel like the trials and tribulations of our world are threatening to overwhelm. Jesus, our returning king, is powerful. He's good. He's true. He's just. And he can be trusted. And in him we have an unspeakable hope. Even amidst the glory and the judgment, though, we see in Matthew 25 that Jesus still decides to walk down a path of great humility. After all, what kind of a king identifies, as Jesus does, with the poor and the hungry, the sick and the imprisoned? This vision in Matthew's gospel of Jesus may be one where Jesus rules over the nations. And yet the heart of Jesus, his very identity, who he is, belongs first, as it does throughout the Gospels, first to those who suffer. And so, what I want you to hear from me this morning is that because this text isn't about what we earn or we deserve, we should understand that Jesus is present in a special way among the marginalized. Not because he's checking up on the privileged, but because he loves those who are hurting. Second, I want you to notice how both the sheep as well as the goats react upon hearing that their lives have intersected with the king of kings in some mysterious way over the years. They both say something to the effect of, come again? They seem confused. They're unsure what's going on. None of them had any idea that the king they had met would be found among the people. And the reason why is that their actions weren't calculated. In other words, the righteous, they weren't caring for the least of these in order to somehow merit God's grace. Quite the opposite. It was their reception of God's grace that compelled them to care for those who suffer. Friends, we welcome the stranger, not simply to be like Jesus, but perhaps more importantly, to be with Jesus. Christ is the beginning and the end of all that we do, and we can only pass on what we first receive. We can only love in those, those ways in which we have been loved. We receive from Christ love and mercy and healing, and then we are free to go out into the world to love and forgive and to heal ready to learn on that last day that our every encounter was with Christ himself. A king who dwells not among the powerful, but among those in need. I want to close with this thought. These images that we have heard about this morning of Jesus returning in glory, they're all rather unlikely. A king who makes his home among the disinherited. A lamb who sits upon the throne. I don't think anyone could ever invent or fabricate such an image. Rather, I'm convinced that we have these images before us quite simply because they are true. This is beyond ordinary human imagination. This is the grace of God. And this is exactly who Jesus is. Jesus was the lamb that was slain. Jesus died to bring life, and he lives even now that death may die. Because of Jesus, a cross marked by suffering has become for us a tree that offers healing. This is our king. This is our leader. This is our hero. Upon him, we can cast every care. We can give him every burden. We can give him every worry, and he will take it. And in return, he will offer back to us life. These are uncertain days. 
I don't like preaching to a camera. I don't like feeling the, the weight of all that's happening upon my shoulders, and I know that you don't like these same realities either. And yet, though today is uncertain and tomorrow is uncertain, and the season ahead is not maybe what we want it to be, our end, our future could not be any more certain. Our destination could not be any surer. Our king is coming again in glory. To him be endless praise. To him be all adoration, all love. Crown him with many crowns. The lamb upon the throne. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. Uh, that can be found on page 358 of the Book of Common Prayer as well as your bulletins. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he came incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, and he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. St. Margaret's is praying for the church, the nation, and the world. We pray especially at this time for those in our own community in need of healing. Earl, Sandy, Peter, Anne, Linda, Kathy, Kim, Cindy, Rebecca, Dawn, Adriana, Danny. We pray also for those needing strength and guidance. Jennifer, Tiffany, Mary, Bill, Donna, Janice. We pray for those who have died. Dick Hamler. We all also offer a special prayer for our missionary Corinne to stay safe and well. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. 
Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. We may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins for our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Share a sign of peace with whomever you're next to or by the power of God's gracious spirit. Uh, well, St. Margaret's, uh, again, it, it, it's, it's, it's good to be back in this space. Uh, I, I, I do miss our, our, our outdoor service and, and what, a, what a time that we had. Uh, I will always be grateful uh, for uh, that season. Um, I am hopeful this season will, will be shorter rather than longer, but for now, uh, we are streaming uh, from inside uh, the sanctuary. Um, I have just a, a couple of announcements. Advent does start uh, on Sunday, and so uh, stay tuned. We, we are planning a few uh, Advent uh, events, and we're looking to get people involved. I'm going to be reaching out to some people. I, I, I want to do what we can to make this Advent season a very special one, one in which God moves uh, in our midst and in and through our community. Uh, we have wrapped up our stewardship campaign, although uh, I think there are just a, a few of you that may be uh, pledged last year and, and, are, and are planning on pledging this year and haven't done so. If, if that's you, I invite you to do that. Uh, we, we thus far have had a very successful campaign, uh, and if we can just kind of uh, 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 conclude the cam campaign with flourish, uh, I would be so excited to share some exciting news just kind of about all that's happening. Uh, and so... Uh, I think we're in a very good place, and I think uh, we're at that moment where we can really uh, uh, finish strong. Uh, thank you to, to those of you that have made that uh, commitment, uh, that are investing in our community, and, and, and I trust that by God's grace, 2021 uh, will be a better year. Uh, uh, we'll see. You, <laughs> no one knows what's ahead, uh, and yet we are a people of great hope. Um, that's all I have, uh, other than uh, thank you for joining in. Uh, thank you for, for streaming and, and for worshiping with us. Uh, we trust that there is more to our world than what we see. And the Spirit of God is in our midst. And it's the Spirit that connects us, uh, even though we are physically di uh, distant. And so I trust that that reality is happening, uh, even in this moment. So thank you for joining us. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in Jesus Christ, our Lord, you have received us as your sons and daughters, made us citizens of your kingdom, and given us the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, and the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from, you, uh, from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ. And bring us to that heavenly country, where with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Margaret, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, the firstborn through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. our sins away slain for us and we remember the promise made that all 
who come in faith find forgiveness at the cross. So we share in the spread of life, and we dream of his sacrifice as a sign of a bonds of peace around the table of the King. The body of our Savior, Jesus Christ, torn for you. Eat and remember the wounds that heal, the death that brings us life. Paid the price to make us one. So we share in this bread of life. And we drink of his sacrifice as a sign of our bonds of love around the table of the King. blood that cleanse us every stain of sin shed for you drink and remember he drained death's cup that all may enter in to receive the life of god so we share in the spread of and we drink of his sacrifice as a sign of our bonds of grace around the table of the King. So with thankfulness and faith we rise to respond and to remember our call to follow in the steps of Christ as his body here on earth as we share in his suffering we proclaim Christ will come again and will join in the feast of heaven around the table of the King. As we share in his suffering, we proclaim Christ will come again and will join in the feast of heaven around the table of the King. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you've graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace. We grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. 
Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Well, St. Margaret's uh, a joy uh, to be with you uh, on this feast of Christ the King. Um, so, so many feelings, <laughs> so many feelings uh, on this Sunday, um, and yet this is a Sunday of great hope, and uh, next week is Advent, and that is a season, more than a Sunday, it's a season of hope. So, as always, I miss you, I love you, uh, I am... Uh, as we all are, working our way day by day. And yet, uh, uh, the future, I think, uh, will be just fine. And so, uh, a very blessed Thanksgiving. I hope it is a safe and a healthy and a happy one for you. There is uh, much to be grateful for, uh, even in the midst of a year like 2020. And so, I wish every uh, Thanksgiving blessing to you. And I'm I'm already eagerly anticipating Advent and, and our gathering again for worship a week from today. And so until then, you are missed, you are loved, uh, and I'll just say uh, that's bye for now.